Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. This is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. That sounds terrible. What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. <laughs> and you are going in SmackDown Live. Who needs Raw? What's up? It's your girl, Sasha Banks, the legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. And you are tuned in to Going In Raw right now. How you doing? Hey, friend, no, Steve here. And Larson. Yeah, welcome to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling news podcast that you need to be watching. This office is so different than how it used to be. I am so thrown off. All right, we'll just get this out Your of the way. Your desk used to be over here, and now it's right by me. Yeah. It's it's all different. I, I have, don't know if I like it. Look at this. I have a field over here. I have no space on my side. And I could just go do whatever. There's so many activities I could do over here. I used to have. I'm going to be doing jumping jacks. All that space over here, and now I have no space. Jumping jack time, Larson. Look at that. Oh, I'm gassed already. All right. So, anyways, let's get back to it. This is the show formerly known as Newsplex. Yeah. So we we officially now have seven <laughs> seven podcasts, seven episodes of Going in Raw as a full podcast every single week. Um, to, when you put it that way, I just realized what we got ourselves into. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, it's it's kind of become like a sick joke with us. It's, hey, let's have an idea for some short form content. And then within a couple of weeks, ah, fuck it, let's do a podcast. By short form, I mean just not as long form. Okay, well, full disclosure, the, the, the point of Newsplex in being a short form show, to be completely honest, was a strategy to try to boost uh, the, 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 our sub count. Yeah, just a short burst of news. That's easily digestible yeah. for people who watch the, the, the channel already and also for people who might be new to it. Because like a 12-minute video is more digestible. Like when you see it, it's like, oh, okay, cool. I don't have to – the point of entry is a lot lower, is a lot less of a commitment yes. than diving into a full podcast. Yes. That was the idea, and I thought it was a solid idea. I'm pretty sure it was my idea, and my idea did not work. Because we're, we were still caught in that YouTube thing of just like getting some subs and then no subs and then sub subs. Yeah. And so it didn't exactly work. I no. think there's a couple. I have a couple reasons I think I think why, but I'm not going to go into that. Um, but so that was the idea behind Newsplex. Yes. Um, and eventually we were just like, look, you know what? Sometimes uh, on the tail end of a weekend. A like, lot of stuff happens. A lot of stuff happens. So I'm like, yeah, just fuck it. And on the days. That, well, you, you talk about what you want for the podcast version of, of what is just we're going to call going in our we're going to call it. Yeah, guys. yeah, yeah. Um, pretty much the Monday edition. Yeah, the Monday edition. We're going to format more kind of like a sports radio show. We'll have topics. And during the weekend, all or one of us will solicit the friendos out there for questions. Yeah. So, you know, we can't take phone calls like a sports radio show would, but we can take questions from Patreon, from Twitter, video questions mm -hmm. from our uh, $20 Patreon patrons. Mm -hmm. So that's how we'll do it. Not every question is going to make it on the show because you want to keep this relatively focused on yeah. the news topics that happen over the weekend. Right. For example, we got two primary topics today. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, if you ask the question, we, whether it's video or written, and we think it will enhance the conversation that, that we're going to have, mm -hmm. we'll include it. Yeah. Um, for Dirt Sheet on Friday, going forward for the foreseeable future, we'll still have video questions there. Those will be more general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. if you have just a general video question you want to ask, save that for Dirt Sheet. So if, if you have a yeah. question regarding the topics that we list, and granted this week I kept it a little more general just to see what kind of reception we'd get. Right. Um, then ask it then. And speaking of video questions, at the $20 Patreon market, patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson, that's where you're eligible yes. to ask video questions. If we open it up to everybody, then we just get a fucking flood of video questions. Yeah. We don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, so we, we reward those people. It's a $20 tier. You get to put in your video question. We've got a couple of really good ones. And the yes. ones that we left out today, we'll toss them on the dirt sheet or yes. we'll ask those people, hey, do you want to put up something different for the dirt sheet? It's yes. You. yes. But yeah, like you said, we want to keep this more focused. Um, and on, on just if, in case you're curious, on Mondays where, let's say, there's like no wrestling news, then we're going to take one of those questions that people ask and we're going to sort of make topics out of that. Yes. If there's like a good question or, well, you know, we'll pull a good question and we'll talk about that. It's just like, it's Monday. One thing that I really like about going in raw is that a lot of people say, Hey, you know what? I like to turn you guys on when I'm working or I'm on my commute. And 
I mean, yeah, we're a YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. By the way, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I'm just, see, that's a lot easier than doing a whole show to get subs. Just say, hey, hit the subscribe button because that kind of works. I know. Because <laughs> YouTube does that shit where they unsubscribe people. Yes. But, uh, but no, and so I like that now on Monday, when, you know, the toughest fucking day of the week usually, when you're on your commute to your job or when you're at your job and you don't feel like working. Or on your way back home. Instead of having 12 minutes, you have an entire 45 minutes to an hour, whatever we're going to do. Yeah. So that's cool. Yes. Um, yeah, so we're there at the Patreon. We're also at uh, ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash going in raw. Yes. We have five solid designs right now. More to come. And, uh, of course, wherever good podca- wherever, whatever good podcast apps there are, you can find us in audio form there. Yes. Um, be, heard, be sure to hit that subscribe button Yes, as well. but let's get to the news. We've talked for, what, six minutes so far about everything but wrestling news, so let's get started with that. Okay. Almost yeah. six minutes. Almost so, six minutes. Um, tonight, Monday, the Superstar Shake-Up begins. It's going to happen oh, over both yeah. Raw yeah. and yeah. SmackDown We're Live. We're going to shake it up. We're going to shake it up. <laughs> um, so over the weekend, you know, we reported on, on Friday's Dirt Sheet about the latest round of rumors um, from uh, the Wrestling, Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Right. Um, the major moves were AJ going to Raw, mm-hmm. New Day going to SmackDown, yeah. and Charlotte going to Raw, and Alexa Bliss. Sorry, Charlotte going to SmackDown, right. Alexa Bliss going to Raw. So there's been some more news over the weekend. Uh, on Friday, pretty much right after, I feel like, uh, uh, Dirt Sheet went up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pro Wrestling Insider reported that a club reunion could be the works. Ooh. It'd be in the works. Obviously, if AJ went to Raw, yeah. that could happen. Yeah. But they also mentioned there's possibility of having Gallows and Anderson mm-hmm. moving to SmackDown, keeping AJ on SmackDown. Right. Um, and they also reported that Sasha Banks could be moving to SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember if they said either instead of or along with Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Um, on, then on Sunday... Uh, Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, I believe, stated that uh, that he again stated, sorry, that AJ is headed to Raw and that Roman Reigns may be headed to SmackDown Live. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this morning, WrestleZone reported that uh, I guess WWE has like a trading card game called Slam Slam Trading Card. Yeah, and they might have you know leaked some information. This I think is kind of bunk, but continue. Yeah. Um, uh, about two potential stars switching brands. Um, I guess there's a card that has AJ Styles silhouette with mm-hmm. a raw background mm-hmm. and a card with Charlotte silhouette with a SmackDown background. Mm-hmm. I don't know how reliable that this leak I, is. I really doubt there's, I mean, that's a little bit of smoke. I really doubt there's any fire there because you know, you know that these things can change up to like oh, the show goes. Or probably so during the show. That's why you can't really take, uh, you, you have to take a lot of the um, uh, advertising, like shows that are advertising a house show two oh, months yeah, down yeah, the yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. It always says card subject to change. And that's, and that's seriously because not only can injuries happen, but Vince will change his mind on certain things like title changes here with the superstar shakeup, yeah. the draft, they'll change their mind like on a dime. Yeah. And so they're just giving you an idea of what superstars could or most likely will show up. But marketing, they're not told ahead of time by Vince, hey, this is going to happen because Vince so often will simply change his mind right yes. before. For all we know, Monday Night Raw, as we're recording this, is six hours away. They might still be figuring out who's going to go where. Oh, I'm sure they are. That's a very distinct possibility. Yes. Um, so... Uh, given the, this format of your show, are we going to talk about this, or are we going to just go straight? We're going to go into questions and then talk about within the context of the questions asked. Sounds good. First Sounds up, good. we got live sex show champion Scott Haas. He says, "How exactly do you see the shakeup being executed? Will it just be a traditional draft, a lottery draft, maybe a series of trades throughout Raw? What do you guys think, friendos? I was trying to play this out. Thank you for the question, Scott. Yes, I was trying to play this out in my head driving the other you know, the other day. I was like, okay, how how is this actually literally literally going to play out on TV? They'll have a big announcement with being, oh, it's a superstar shakeup, and then they'll have probably the first one, the first trade. I think it's probably going to be trades, a series of trades. This, I would think this is what I want. This is in, in my mind. I want, uh, <laughs> I, I want. Raw. Is this, okay, hold on. Let me ask you: Is what you want what you think is going to happen? Absolutely not. Okay, great. It's what perfect, I want then. is I want I want uh, Kurt Angle, and maybe if Stephanie's back to be in the, the Raw War Room, mm-hmm. and I want Shane and Daniel Bryan to be there in the SmackDown War Room. Okay, I like that. With some with some scouts. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pat Patterson, Briscoe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fit Finley. Yeah. 
uh, Adam, Adam Pierce. Pierce, yeah, Sarah Del Rey, yeah, and yeah. I want them all on the phones, yeah, working out trades. Kevin as Costner's the, there as, as the show happens, and every once in a while we cut to the war room mm-hmm. and, and 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 see deals go down. Yeah, great. That would be great. That'd be good. I like that a lot. Okay, so I like that idea. Um, I think it's probably gonna. I like that idea a lot, but I think it's not gonna play out that way. I think we're just gonna get updates in between matches. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Say, I wish Vince was on. That's my only thing. I wish Vince was on commentary. So every time there's a shakeup, like he'll be on the commentary. Well, how about this? Hey, what's up? How about this? Hey, we got a new shakeup. They could do that, but they do raw. Vince come out and interrupt matches <laughs> <laughs> to yeah, announce we can have a graphic. That's good. Showing yeah. the trade. Yeah. Maybe a video package. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's going to be like in a, in a trade format, though. That's what I would yeah. think. I don't think it's going to be straight up like AJ's move. I mean, maybe. I guess that's kind of what they did during the draft, like the, the old school draft. They would just say, oh, John Cena is going to Raw. And then they'd go back to like a thing in there. Oh, Batista's headed to SmackDown. Well, that's what they did during the draft last time. They would have a few picks, then a match, mm-hmm. go back up yeah. to the, the top of the ramp where they had the podiums, make a few picks, go back to matches. Yeah. But it really so wasn't terribly dramatic. They'll have a picture of the superstar. And then behind them, the graphic of the brand they're going to. Yes. <laughs> to visually indicate where that person is. They are is either on Raw or what SmackDown. What shakeup just happened. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Next question. From go ahead. Terrence Thompson. Um, does the thought of AJ being taken off SmackDown bother you as much as it does me? The obvious thing to do is simply put Roman on SmackDown Live. Terrence, yes. Terrence AJ, Thompson is, is... AJ should stay on SmackDown. He's so, he's so racked. We, so, we didn't really talk about... What we think is going to happen? Uh, look, I, I Dave Meltzer, I full credit. He's, he's he has his people in there. He knows what he's talking about. I have a gut feeling we're going to see. God damn, I don't know, man. If if Roman does go over to, I don't think Roman's going to SmackDown because he's supposed to be facing Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 34 for the Universal Title in the main event. I don't think that's happening. I don't think AJ's going to to Raw either. I think they're probably going to bring the club over. Now that I say that, I'm probably going to be 100 percent wrong. Because uh, my my thing is this: we've heard for so long that Vince wants AJ on Raw. Something tells me that he might have waffled over the past like two weeks or whatever. But it, as of today, he's probably waking up. I really want him on Raw. It's the best show. Yeah. <laughs> that I mean, I just I I I'm not going to do a prediction on this necessarily. I would love to see him stay on SmackDown. Yes. I really would because I love that promo he dropped last week. That being said, that being said, here's the thing. Number one, there's two things here. Number one, AJ versus Nakamura on SmackDown. Who wouldn't That's love to huge, see that? Huge, huge money. On the other hand, the prospect of all the former Bullet Club guys I know. over on Raw also huge money. That's I'm I'm okay as long as we get AJ versus Finn. I'm totally cool with that because hey, we've seen AJ versus Nakamura at Wrestle Kingdom two years ago. I know, and AJ and Finn, as far as I know, have never had a match together because the the AJ's yeah. first match in New Japan yeah. was the same day as Finn's last match. And here's the thing about that AJ Nakamura match back at Wrestle Kingdom. You're not gonna. They're not gonna. WWE ain't gonna let them do better than that. No, because you can't do the moves that they're doing in the WWE. I know. God, I'm still hurting over that. Oh. That Okada Shibata match. Yeah, we're gonna do a recap on that yes. uh, for tomorrow morning. Yes. Oh boy. Um. So yeah, let's see. Next question here. Wait, did I? Uh, yeah, yeah, we we entered it. Yeah. Okay. Life. Lachlan the Shagger Sherek. Rumors that Sasha Banks will go to SmackDown. Live, what do you guys think will happen to Bailey in the women's championship if this happens? So let's say, let's say, Dude, I'm still thinking Charlotte's gonna go to SmackDown. Well, I don't seen, think it's gonna be Sasha. I've seen reports that it's gonna be both, but that's I think so weird. I know this defeats the purpose of sending them over to the first place because what you want to do is, is have them switch brands so you give yourselves new matchups. Yeah, exactly. I don't see the reason of putting, I mean, I, to a degree, I understand. You could argue that what SmackDown is lacking in the women's division is star power, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even though I think Becky Lynch and, and Alexa Bliss Becky's are stars. Becky's sort of been so like under the radar lately. I, know. I feel like they're they're kind of taking her for granted. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um. So I understand if they want to send Charlotte or Sasha mm-hmm. to yeah, SmackDown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But sending them both over there, I just feel like you're going back. Granted, it was a great feud. You're just going. Back to that well again. I agree. Just on a different show. I, you you send one over there and you have a mountain to climb. It's yeah. kind of like if you send Roman Reigns to SmackDown Live. Oh my God, everybody has a new mountain to climb. Yeah. Um, you send Charlotte over there. It's like oh my God, literally the foundation of the women's division. We're gonna now we have to deal with this. Yeah. That's why. And I I just the way she was she was 
sort of, I would say, written off last week on yeah. Raw. Yeah. I'm like, man, it makes all the sense in the world center to SmackDown. Say, send Charlotte and Nia Jax to SmackDown because they've kind of teased over the last couple of weeks that there's something happening there between the two of them in terms of a feud. And then send Alexa Bliss and Carmella to Raw. See, I like just I like sending Charlotte for Alexa Bliss straight up. Yeah, I like that because Nia Jax, you don't need to bring Nia Jax over. Keep Nia Jax as the mountain to climb on Raw. Charlotte as the mountain to climb on SmackDown. I think that's I think that's great. And then you can even have Sasha Banks maybe turn heel. Yeah, I don't know. No, I think if if Charlotte moves to SmackDown, it gives Sasha a great opportunity mm-hmm. to turn heel. Between now and WrestleMania 34. Yeah, but I think Bailey, she, I mean, she'll be she'll be sticking around as the women's champion on Raw, and she'll have Nia Jax to contend yeah. with. It's obvious that they want to push her. Yeah. Jose, GGR. WWE came out with an article about who should move in the shakeup, and one was Shinsuke Nakamura. Do you think any returning wrestlers, Finn or the Hardys, or newly debuted wrestlers such as Shinsuke or the Revival will move brands? I said on the dirt sheet, no, absolutely not. I could see the Hardys being sent to SmackDown so they can have all the tag team titles. Well, you see they showed up in ICW I saw that. with the I saw uh, that. tag titles. Yeah, I saw that. That's great. Um, you know what? You're right. That That's the one That's the one caveat. That's the one sort of exception that I think could be made in terms of returning superstars. But I think Shinsuke, from what I read, they, they're sort of replacing Cena with Shinsuke. Yeah. Um, which is really interesting and awesome yes. that they have those kind of hopes for him. I know. That's fantastic. I know. Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to SmackDown. I'm really looking forward to SmackDown Live after this, this brand. If, I know, if, me too. It's so funny, dude. As much as we kind of shit on the handling of the Roman Reigns character, um, viewing, seeing him on, I, I don't know, man. I still think Seth might move over to SmackDown Live. Yeah, I think it's be possible with you because I think Finn and Seth kind of maintain the same space. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm looking forward to. Uh, I'm looking forward to. As far as out. the call ups, though, I think they are on the shows. They're going to be for a while. They wouldn't have had Shinsuke's big debut and Ty's big debut on a show. They're not going to be on. I know for a, yeah, exactly. for a week. Uh, here we go. Cheap pop champion Andrew Lemon Lemon Lemon. With the shakeup, could you who could you possibly see benefiting the most from the movements? Uh, for example, Miz with the draft, and whose possible stories could flourish? Do to the shakeup. Um, I mean, Sami Zayn, I think, is the obvious answer here. I mm-hmm. think if he moves over to SmackDown, mm-hmm. that'd be huge for him. I mean, we, I don't think they would go down this well necessarily anytime soon, but down the line, if they kept all things sort of, uh, you know, we remember the Sami Zayn Nakamura match on NXT was fantastic. Yes. I'd love to see more of that. Uh, um, possible stories that could flourish due to the shakeup. I actually thought about, about one when I first read this and then I forgot it. Well, AJ Finn is kind of the biggest, the, the most obvious one in yeah. my book. Um, I'm trying to think of a story that's actually happening now. The, oh, oh, oh. That are happening now? Yeah. How would Bray Orton? I'm still so torn over this Bray Orton thing. I have no idea how that's shaking out, man. Because you bring Roman Reigns over to SmackDown. Who would Roman? Okay, let me ask you this. Pose, pose this question. Okay. Or actually, no. You know what? We'll, uh, we'll get to the video questions first. Okay. And then I'll ask you this question. First okay. video question is from the video game review guy, TGX, who drops a promo at the beginning of his video. Let's take a look. What's up, friendos? And this is your reigning, defending, undisputed YouTube game review champion, TGX. And you can find me at TGX Game Reviews on YouTube. Go search it up. TGX Game Reviews. Come check it out. Come hang out. Come subscribe. All that good shit. So this is my debut video question. And so for today, my video question is simply... Who is the one person in the entirety of the WWE that can benefit more than anybody from the superstar shakeup? Whether that be uh, from being transferred to another brand, whether that mean uh, staying on the same brand but not having as much competition. Who is the one person in the entirety of the WWE that can benefit the most from the superstar shakeup? Thanks, friendos. Once again, that's TGX Game Reviews. Come check me out. Thank you. Thank you, TGX. And he gave a shout out to all shit. See, so the twenty dollars Patreon tier, you can give a shout out to your shit too. <laughs> Go check out his game reviews. His question is, well, who's the one superstar who could benefit? Sami Zayn, single superstar. Sami Zayn. You know what's funny is I think he's at the top of that. Did WWE do a poll or somebody else? Maybe it's WWE did a poll, and he's like far and away like yeah. top guy. He definitely should go to SmackDown. Yes. Okay, let me ask you this: Roman Reigns. Let's say Roman Reigns goes to SmackDown. Let's yeah. say those rumors are true. Who does he feud with first?
assuming AJ goes to Raw. Yes. You either have to be, well, it can't be Randy or Break because they're still tied up in a storyline. There's Dean. Yeah. It seems like Shinsuke and The Miz are going to be in a feud. Yeah. With AJ leaving, I mean, AJ AJ is kind of tough to call AJ. But AJ, I mean, he was traditionally, he was a heel. Yeah. If a face comes in, he could he could take him on yeah, as yeah, a heel. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're taking one heel out, you're adding one face. You need some balance there. Yes. You know Sammy's going to SmackDown. That yeah. shit's happening. Yeah. What other heel can move over to SmackDown, though? Braun. I mean, I guess you have Baron waiting around doing nothing. Yeah. And I kind of feel oh, like... Oh, yeah, that, I suppose. Yeah, it'd be, so he's it'd be, sort of, Reigns, it'd be Reigns Baron. That's he's probably the, He's the heel in waiting, I guess. Because especially if they want to start laying the groundwork, even if he moves to SmackDown for Reigns facing off against Lesnar mm-hmm. at WrestleMania, assuming that's true, mm-hmm. they're going to put every kind of roadblock, serious yeah. roadblock in front of Reigns to build him up. Yeah. So they're going to start feeding him Baron. Let me ask them, who do you see fighting Lesnar at SummerSlam? You think they're going to extend this Braun thing all the way to SummerSlam? Maybe. You think so? Maybe. Yeah, it could be. Um, I'm going to say the one superstar who can benefit most from the shakeup is Baron Corbin because I feel like there's a lot that he can do and he needs fresh meat. Yeah. That's what I feel. Yeah. Uh, next up, Carlos Hackworth. Uh, let's see what his video question is. Hey, what's going on, friendos? Since uh, we got the shoop- the uh, superstar shakeup, um, what are some fantasy bookings that you would like to see um in the uh, in the uh, upcoming months um me personally uh since uh zach Ryder is injured um i will it would be interesting for him to come back and turn heel on mojo being that mojo has gotten such a big push uh over the past couple months and um i guess the angle would be that without zach Ryder, mojo would still be in nxt um so yeah, uh, if you could do some fantasy booking for the next few months with storylines and angles, what would they be? Thanks, friendos. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Carlos. So basically, Carlos is asking, what are some of the dream matchups? You oh, want AJ to Finn. See? Yeah, AJ, AJ Finn. Finn. Yeah. Yeah. That's if AJ is going to move over to Raw, this, I'll be happy strictly. So at SummerSlam, probably or WrestleMania, mm-hmm. we'll get AJ versus Finn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's tops in my books. I'm trying to think of anybody. If there's anything else. Who would you want to see Sami Zayn? Okay, so Baron Corbin is the heel in waiting. He can't take on all incoming faces. Who would you want to see Sami Zayn take on? Had we seen Sami versus AJ? I don't think so when they were both on Raw. If Sami Zayn came in and AJ stayed, oh my God. That'd be great. Could you imagine that match? That'd be fantastic. Oh, God, give me that. Yeah. Freaking SummerSlam or Mania yeah. or whatever. Uh, last question with regards to this particular topic, the superstar shakeup. Comes from Samuel O and his dog. Mr. Samuel O here today with Dumb Dog and the wife behind the camera. Got our quick question for you for this week and my friend, good friend, DeSorono. With the superstar shakeup coming on and the whole Rollins versus Triple H and that whole kerfluffle a duffle of Bill, here's my question for you. Do you think we're going to see the women's division get involved in this? You know, a women's faction and vibe? Thank you for that. I appreciate you. Anyway, we're going to see the women's division get involved. And here's my most important question for you this week. What part about the superstar shakeup makes you the most erect? Thank you. Thank you, Samuel O. So it's a two-part question. Mm-hmm. Um, will the women's division get involved in the Triple H Rollins storyline due to the shakeup? I don't think so. Especially if Rollins moves over to SmackDown. But I guess, you know, there's always a possibility that if Triple H's faction is actually officially unveiled as mm-hmm. a real faction, they could bring in someone from the women's division. I think they're going to be waiting a really long time for that to happen, and I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. And I honestly think that if whatever storylines are happening with the shakeup in the same manner we saw with the draft, if a storyline is going down and those participants are taken apart, Hell, even if two, I could even see if two of those participants, like two, like let's say it's not going to happen, Kevin Owens and let's say Kevin Owens and Finn Balor are in in the middle of a storyline. Yeah. And they get shook and both to SmackDown. I could see them not even continuing their shit. You know, know. they they do weird shit like that. Like they just, oh, let's just drop that storyline and put them over here. By and large, there's a lack of vision. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. Um, All right, moving on. Second part of its question Which part of the superstar shakeup makes you the most? 
Yeah. The voice. Yeah. Uh, the reunion of the club. Yeah. The the prospect of AJ either having the opportunity to take on Shinsuke Nakamura or Finn Balor. One of those two things has to happen. And so we're going to get some really, really good matches coming up. Yes. Hopefully over the next couple months. Yes. Because one of those things has to happen. Yes. So that's what I'm act over. Next in the news. Yes. Is Mauro Ranello. Oh, oh, no more Mauro with the WWE. Oh, no. It looks like that might be the case. On yeah. Saturday, CBS Sports um, had an article. Um, stating that Morrow was likely done with the company. Um, and this report, of course, comes after uh, Morrow being off TV for about a month now, I think. Yeah. Um, and there have been reports surfacing that Morrow's been suffering from another bout of depression, potentially. Right. And that, uh, uh, that potentially JBL's bullying yeah. might have something to do with it. This is picking up a lot of steam. Um, yes. So... Uh, Especially this last week. I think, you know, uh, Justin Roberts just put out a book yeah. within the last two weeks, month. Yeah. And he touches on uh, an incident where, uh, according to him, JBL was, if not directly, uh, indirectly responsible for stealing his passport mm-hmm. while they were overseas. Yeah. And so he had to, you know, do a bunch of stuff to get back into the country. Yeah. Like, we've always heard about JBL's bullying problem. Well, I mean, he beat up Blue Meanie he at lit- the like of the show. If you literally want to see evidence of him bullying, it's him actually making the Blue Meanie bleed during what was supposed to be kind of a fun scrum at brawl, the end of that yeah, brawl. To, to finish a show, yeah. To finish an ECW show. Um, so, uh, let's see here. Well, when was this? When the uh, Wrestling Observer Newsletter uh, uh, released their year-end awards. Yeah, it was Not in too long ago. March, I, I think. it was think. in March, yeah. yeah. They named Moro for the second year in a row, best announcer. Okay, so a little perspective here. Uh, I tweeted out... A and now knowing that he suffers from depression, I I kind of feel bad about this, kind of. But at the same time, if you're a public figure, and what I tweeted out was a joke, because he makes all those pop culture references. So a while ago, I tweeted out from at Real Going and Raw while I was watching SmackDown Live. I said, "How soon is he going to be until?" And I tagged him, and I shouldn't have. Moro Anello uh, reference and makes a bad Brangelina reference, and you guys voted to like the tune of like 800 votes. It was crazy. Um, I, we weren't following Moro at the time because what I realized, I think from my personal account, I followed him and I realized just how often he retweets praise for himself, which is kind of a little bit of a pet peeve. And I do that sometimes from that real going in raw, but that's mainly just to sort of, I don't know, bond with community. And usually it's if there's something funny, it's not like, oh, you guys are great. And I was like, oh, retweet. But um, anyways, so we weren't following him, but he ended up blocking us. I felt kind of bad after the fact before I even knew he had depression because I was like, oh, you know what? Nobody wants to do their job and then see some asshole being snarky on Twitter. So I legitimately did feel yeah, yeah. kind of bad about it. Um, so anyways, and he responded with something snarky back, which is totally fine. Um, but anyways, that sort of his habit of retweeting shit, like his heavy Twitter usage plays into this whole story because when the Wrestling Observer released their year-end awards, he had won in the audience award or whatever for best announcer. He won that, and he tweeted that out. Apparently, that's a big fucking no-no to JBL. I have no idea why. There's some sort of weird, one of those weird WWE unwritten rules about not telling your own horn or maybe yeah, 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 talking about the Wrestling Observer. I don't know. I don't know, but apparently JBL laid in tomorrow on Bring It to the Table, like really laid into him. And I saw that segment. It's mildly amusing, but also when JBL, when his um, uh, defense of that, which he's defended on Twitter, which he, by the way, blocks a lot of people too. He says, well, I'm a heel. I'm, I'm in character doing that. And when you watch it, honestly, it does come off that way. Now, when you're presenting that on air as your heel persona, that's one thing. Yeah. If, as these reports are are, are are evidence of, apparently, or testing to, he's an asshole behind the scenes. Um, they're, like You were talking about Justin Roberts, and he's, he relates his part of, of the story about uh, JBL uh, stealing uh, Justin Roberts' uh, passport at yes. one point. Yes, He said, I was sitting in the production. Oh, no, no, no. Um, John Morrison, that's right. In an interview with Deadspin, John Morrison, Johnny Mundo right now, stated that JBL asked him and his tag team partner at the time, which is Joey Mercury, I believe, to steal 
Justin Roberts passport and they eventually refused. But apparently to according to Morrison, both he and Mercury were being uh bullied. Yeah. by JBL at the time and so they had to kind of weigh their decision like, you know, if if they did this form, mm-hmm. then maybe they'd be off the hook as far as future bullying mm-hmm. but at the same time. I think Morrison says in this article is like, if I put myself in Justin Roberts' place, that would suck. Mm-hmm. So they didn't do it. Mm-hmm. And, and I believe uh, Morrison continues. It just got to the point where after Morrison had established his spot, he felt comfortable defending himself. He shoved JBL. Yeah. Yeah. But he stopped. was he was like an upper mid carter. He was like a main yeah. eventer guy. Yeah. yeah. And then it stopped. And it stopped. That's what. Then there was the Joey Styles incident from yeah. the tour of Iraq that they did. Yeah. Where Joey Styles had had just enough of JBL and he fucking decked him. Yeah. And JBL stopped bullying him. Yeah. Um, and, uh, let's see here. What was the other one that edge wrote in his autobiography that at one point he was showering and JBL comes up behind him and starts soaping his ass. What the fuck is this guy's problem? Like what in the fuck? And the, 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 the main issue here is that evidently Vince McMahon is totally like encouraging of this shit. Yeah. Justin Roberts, uh, says there's another aspect to the whole passport story. Um, he said he was sitting at a production meeting. Vince McMahon is running the meeting. And when it ends, he's the first to leave. This is all from the Deadspin uh, report. Uh, Roberts recalled, I was sitting there, and as he walked by me, he just whispered to me, don't forget your passport. Don't forget your passport. I, I refuse to believe Vince is whispering anything to anybody. I know. I know. Hey, don't forget your passport. <laughs> ha ha, and walked away. Yeah. And according to Roberts... That's when I knew there was no sympathy in that company. This stuff is encouraged. Yeah. And uh, Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, um, I think in the most recent one, stated, everyone knows how tight Layfield, JBL, is with Vince McMahon. And, quote, the belief across the board is Layfield's weeding out those who can't make it comes from above. Who can't take it comes from above. Now, this led to uh, a little Twitter back and forth between Dave Meltzer and Jonathan Coachman. Of ESPN, yeah. Of ESPN. And Coachman was basically... You know, saying I don't respond to, and I don't, I, I don't have the exact quotes here. You guys can get on Twitter and check and take a look at the at the thing back and forth. But he was saying, you know, I, it's funny whenever there's like news that. So Coachman was basically saying I don't respond to quote unquote rumors, basically shoving the whole thing off. And Meltzer's like, this is probably going to be a story because Dead's been talking about it. CBS Sports is talking about yeah. it. So now there's like national outlets actually talking about it. Yeah, it might actually become a thing. And ESPN has this weird relationship, which was apparently all sort of. Uh, propagated by Coachman because of his previous relationship with the WWE yeah. and that they sort of want to cover WWE stuff, but don't want to cover like it as news. They're just sort of doing it as a fun aside. Yeah. And, but when it comes to something like this, which I'm sorry, but in this day and age, this isn't the old times, man, you're a publicly traded company. You can't have behavior like this. There are HR standards. Yes. You know, that you have to meet. And uh, soaping up people's asses in the showers just ain't going to cut it. And so, uh, and like, the sad thing is when I read Justin Roberts, like, uh, when he talked about, like, what ended up happening with his passport, he had to go to the American embassy, yeah. get a new passport. Yeah. He had to go. And I'm like, man, fuck you, you know? And I would think just from a professional standpoint, you don't want that stuff happening because Justin Roberts, he's the ring announcer. Yeah. You don't want your ring announcer stuck in a different country when he's supposed to be working shows and doing his job. I know. Because then you have to find another ring announcer. I know. It's so stupid. It's like, really? What is the point of all this I shit? Know. I know. I don't get it, man. But I don't get it at all. And I, it's like, I, I can't imagine working in that kind of, you know, assuming this is in some ways condoned, Mm -hmm. working in that kind of toxic environment. There seems to be like some remnants of the old school that are saying this is one of those like just remnants that just happens. And it's like, I'm sorry, but even as a fan of the product, we would literally talk about this on the SmackDown recap, how awkward it is between JBL and Morrow. It's like, dude, get on the fucking same page. These are performances that you're putting on. If this is your heel persona, then as an actor, you have to understand that it's just coming off as awkward for the audience to yes. watch this shit. Yes. So I don't know. And and then when it comes to a dude who, who's literally suffering from depression, you really want to fuck with that? Like, you really you want, want, want to fuck with a guy's that. livelihood? I know. I know. And his mental state of being like, what if he ended up killing himself? Then how are you going to fucking feel, JBL? I know. You know what I mean? Like, man, I, the, the, the old... The old days of, well, he needs to tough it out. That shit has been proven wrong. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, that shit is not cool. Uh, we have a question from Jimmy Alpha. He says, do you guys believe that JBL's alleged bullying of Morrow is legit? I do, because there's been so much 
there's been so much evidence to support that. Yeah. Uh, Ty Perez says, do you think they should start cracking down on guys like JBL who bully other employees or talent? Yeah, and he brings up a, an interesting point here, too. Should the be a star organization who does work with WWE? I, I think if I'm I mean, not maybe mistaken. Maybe be more stern about the relationship with WWE since guys like JBL go against what they preach. What? Uh, be a star, I think. Isn't that a WWE program? I think it's an actual WWE program. So that's kind of like it's kind of a barking up the wrong tree. But I'm yeah. pretty sure he said that on Twitter. But I mean, the bottom line is, yeah, I mean, you know, you can't be, you can't have this. You can't be going to schools and saying, you know, hey, don't be a bully. Then Mm -hmm. allowing bullying behavior happening in your company. Right. Exactly. You can't do that. Yeah. Um, Ryan Danahy. Um, I'm sure y'all are going to touch on this, but uh, now can, oh, he brings up the, can WWE support, uh, sorry, can WWE as a company support be a star an anti-school bullying program, but from how it currently looks, just disregard years of JBL rumors and issues of just being a bully or an ass to those around him on off camera. Do you think anything will be done? And if so, what? Do you you know, think they'll start doubling down on be a star stuff? It all depends. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to, I don't know if that's going to, I would hope that the WWE would in fact be a star. I, I know. Think, I think it all, honestly, I think this dude's out of a job. If it gets more mainstream oh, yeah. media tra- attention, yeah. I think that's going to be the breaking point because that's you know the only time. Look, you think United would have said word one about that dude getting beat up and dragged off a plane if it weren't for the video? If it weren't for the video, no, they would release their crap statement. They would have probably I don't know, I don't know. But it's you know once you get caught, then you're screwed, yep. and once you get caught, then some something has to go, and uh, and there you go. Yeah, so. uh, retired Dwayne Nix. Do you guys think it's time for JBL? Be taken off WWE TV. Um, yeah, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. There, they, there are plenty of announcers. Replacement with Renee Young. Yeah, you know there, there are plenty of other replacement with Booker T. Replacement with Jerry Lawler. There are plenty of other people who can sit in his spot. He's not. He's not. He he is expendable. Yeah, I'm sorry. He is. And the funny thing is, I really enjoy the Legends with JB. I know it's canceled now, but I really oh, yeah, enjoyed yeah. that program. I think here's the problem. I think he can. I think he does do good work. Yeah, he does. I actually like when it's him. I know the circumstances are crap, but with him and Tom Phillips, I, for whatever, maybe Tom Phillips pu- pushed him. Maybe he sent him a dick pic. I don't know. They have chemistry. They have chemistry. I know. And there isn't any of the awkwardness I there. Know. Maybe know. it's because Tom Phillips is like super tall. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what triggers JBL into bullying somebody. Really don't. Besides the color blue. Um, anyways, what's next? Um, uh, Josh with a dynamic night, Martinez. What do you think should be JBL's punishment for basically always being a dick? Um, I mean, if it's as bad as it, it's probably firing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to find out. Yeah, I can't find it. Uh, yeah, and, and also I think beyond what happened in public, you know, if if say privately there was some stuff going on where JBL was bullying. Morrow mm-hmm. backstage. Mm-hmm. If any of that happened, then yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he should probably be let go. If it was, if it's just a matter, if all this is bullshit and it's just a matter of his heel persona on air, on even bring it to the table. If it's a matter of that sort of getting out of hand, that's different. Yes, I think that's different. But if there is a culture of of Vince sort of encouraging him to be a fucking asshole to people, that's not cool. No, it's like, not. That needs to be. That needs to be finished. I mean, it. I don't know. I, I, I honestly think that the culture in the WWE, I think you're going to see a lot of changes once Vince retires or, you know, is no longer in charge of the company, mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. form that takes. Yes. But I think the old way of doing things like, I mean, I don't know, but you've heard, you've heard like, okay, uh, <laughs> uh, Rodriguez, Ricardo Rodriguez. Yeah. Talking about Triple H sometimes being the same kind of way. I wonder, I wonder if Triple H, given his, sort of new roles. I wonder if he understands that, man, you can't really do that stuff. I would like to hope so. You would think so. You would yeah. like to hope so, exactly. Yeah. But who knows? I was watching, uh, and this kind of maybe dovetails a little bit, watching uh, the 30 for 30 they did on the XFL. Okay, yeah. And there is a, a segment on there where the league's not going well. Uh, Vince goes on Bob Costas' show, mm-hmm. and Costas starts grilling him. And Vince just immediately tries to intimidate him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and even, you know, they, they interview him today, 
And he says a couple times, like, man, if Costas was, was taller, I might have punched him. Mm -hmm. It's like, why does that have to be the solution? <laughs> I know. I mean, come to, grips, so... come to grips with the fact that the football in your league sucks <laughs> for the most part. Yeah, I know. No one watched it because it wasn't good football. <laughs> I know. It was crap football. I know. And, 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 you know, based on the timeline they gave in that documentary, they more or less launched the league and within, I think, a month or two started mm -hmm. playing games. That's not enough time for quality organized football. Yeah, we right. had more practice than that when we were playing flag football. <laughs> <laughs> and that's you know a huge leap from that to organize professional football it's so funny when they when like the wwe tries to like when they try to put on their sunday best and present themselves to the mainstream and how like backwards they can sometimes really still well, I mean, come like off. the interview is, is like half the time you feel like vince is in mr mcmahon character <laughs> <laughs> because you know they're sitting in chairs across from each other and about half it seems like halfway through they don't show the whole interview but you know he's Sitting forward in his chair, hands on his knees, like yeah. really getting in Bob Costas' face. And they're maybe yeah. three feet apart from each other. Yeah. And the whole time, Costas is just sitting back in his chair. Oh, I love it. In complete control. Because it's Bob Costas. I know. This guy's been through it all, and man. And they talked to him, and he's like, I know he was trying to intimidate me. I just didn't let him. He showed up to the Olympics with that like horribly red eye that time. Yeah. <laughs> he did not give a shit. It's Bob Costas. I love Bob Costas. Dude. Yeah. He's great. Pie guy. There are many incidents with JBL bullying superstars. Why do you think WWE protects JBL? Even though he does everything against the brand image of anti-bullying. Because I think they can get away with it. And if Vince finds something amusing or helpful in his backwards way of old school thinking, then they're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Motor City champion Gene the Grappler. So what would you do to either get Morrow back on WTV or swap announcers to ship JBL to Raw? Oh, good question. Okay. We know JBL and Cole. They have uh, done broadcast work together. Let's say this. Let's say they take JBL off the air. How? What would you? What would you? I, mean, I, I sort of mentioned earlier Booker T. What would be your SmackDown announce team? You know, this is what I would do. I would shake up the whole fucking lot, man. Yeah. On SmackDown, you get uh, Michael. I'm mean, sorry. You get uh, uh, Tom Phillips, Corey Graves, and. We need like a former superstar. So we're as much as I love Renee Young, I would say not her. She does so, such a good job with like the interview segments and on Talking Smack. I'm going to say no Renee Young, but like Booker T. Yeah. Or even maybe Lawler. But I like Booker T. Better. What about Saxton? No, I want like a former a former legend guy. We need oh, like a former oh. legend guy. Is there somebody hmm. who recently retired? How great would it be if Daniel Bryan I know. wasn't the was so freaking good. GM he was so and good put on him the Cruiserweight the... Classic? I think Edge would be a good announcer. I just don't know if he'd want to do it. Oh, Edge would be good. Yeah. I think he's too, like... He, he seems too busy now. too busy for that. But I think he would be really good. He'd be good. Yeah, because he kind of needs somebody who's, like, fresh meat. Like Booker T when he first started. No, I like that. Edge is good. Yeah, that's good. What about uh, uh, when Big Show retires? <laughs> well, all right, so then head over to Raw. Yeah. Who would we put on Raw? Wait, who do we have in SmackDown? Phillips, Corey Graves. Because you know why? If the Drifter shows up on SmackDown, yeah. then we get Corey Graves. We I get know. that reunion. You get, you get Corey Graves saying, Kinshasa. Oh, man, who wouldn't want that? I know, it's great. And on Raw, we keep Michael Cole. I like Michael Cole. Yeah. Keep him. Uh, who's in Byron Saxon? Oh, I, I put Byron Saxon. In the Renee Young mode. You just have her, have him do interviews, although you got Charlie. I like her. Yeah, she's good. But put Byron Saxon <laughs> put Byron Saxon there. I don't I like Byron, but man, I don't think he adds that much. I want some I want people who are gonna add. Give me Michael Cole. Michael Cole. Hmm. Oh, you know what? How about this? Michael Cole. Oh, Renee Young, I already put her on SmackDown. No, you didn't put her on SmackDown. Well, I haven't. She's on Talking Smack. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But she's too big for that. Yeah. yeah she's good on Talking Smack, though. She, like, anchors that show Who really, really the, well. Who uh, does the post show, the Raw Talk? It's Lawler. Yeah. And who else? Isn't it Re Renee Young? Fuck it. You know what, man? Isn't it Renee Young? Uh, does she? I thought so. No, it's, I think it's Charlie. Isn't it? Oh, okay. I think it's Charlie. Okay. Could be wrong about that. Um, I'm going to say this, man. Michael Cole, Jr. and Jerry Lawler. Oh, that'd be great. Come on, why not? You have them here. I know. You have them there, man. I know. Do it. And then when they're ready to retire, you bring uh, uh, Corey and Tom over to the main, to the big show, to Raw, and then you stack up with the younger talent over on SmackDown. I don't want to say that. Uh, let's see here. Next. Uh, Jordan. Jordan Shafiotti. 
as a form of press media yourselves. Do you think Coach and ESPN in general had a responsibility to cover reports of Morrow's departure having to do with JBL? Did they get too cozy with WWE? I kind of do. Look, man, if you're gonna if you're gonna cover something, you need to cover it. I know you need to do that. They did the uh, somebody pointed out on Twitter to Coachman. You guys covered uh, Richie Incognito. You covered that whole thing. There was a whole culture there it needs to be exposed. I wonder if they think that. Well, if we cover this. There's a lot we have to cover in terms of like problems and and shit like that wellness policy violations. Maybe I don't know how, if they covered that when Roman got hit with the wellness. Policy. I don't think so. I don't think so either. If you're gonna do something, you got to get in bed with the bad and the good. Yes. You know what I mean. Otherwise, you seem like a propaganda arm. And especially, it's 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 not so bad if they just simply didn't cover it. That's one thing. But for Coach to come out and bl- like literally put Dave Meltzer on blast, I know, I know that's bullshit. I know it just seems like, like I said, it seems like you're 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 just doing the, the WWE a favor. Yeah, exactly. And giving him strictly positive you press lose coverage, all credibility at I that know. point. So yeah, that really that I was really bummed out when I saw now uh, Coach and how not, he would respond to other yeah. like tw- you know people on Twitter saying, dude, you know you're lacking credibility and. He just sloughs them off with like some like, oh, I'm too good for you. It's kind of like when people on Twitter are saying, oh, look how many followers I have versus you. I think, God, who fucking did that? And it just annoyed the crap out of me because I'm like, you lose all credibility when you call somebody just because somebody doesn't have like the the, the celebrity status, if you will, yeah. to have a bunch of followers. Their point is invalid. That's I know. Fucking, I hate that. Yeah, so I don't like much. that either. Um, apparently, Coachman's not going to be doing WWE coverage for ESPN anymore. Right. Um, I don't think they've. Uh, issued a statement regarding who may replace him or if they're just going to drop it all together. Well, according, according to him on Twitter, it, that was his project. Yes. He did it in, well, he says his spare time, but I refuse to believe he wasn't paid for it. Yes. Um, and so is maybe, I don't know if it was going to be dropped. I, I, I would imagine it all depends on how it popped the ratings. If yes. People were really into it. Or yeah. Not. Uh, let's see here. But now maybe given how all this has happened within the last two days, maybe, maybe ESPN just decided we're not going to worry about it anymore. Yeah, I don't know. We have one last video question, kind of related to the announcing uh, uh, predicament we're in here from Alexander Carenti. Let's see what Alexander has to say. Hey, guys, for the women's tournament that was announced not too long ago that's happening this summer, what special commentators team do you guys want to see call it? Michael Cole did a phenomenal job in the U.K. tournament, so I would like to see him. And for a special commentator, man, try and reach out to Trish Stratus. She knows how to talk, and she'd be a great color commentator for a women's tournament. And a dream. I mean, you got JR under a two-year deal. Man, it would be great to hear JR on the sound waves again. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Thank you, Alexander. I like the Bullet Club shirt. Yeah. Um, so, the women's tournament is coming up. Now, yes. obviously, um, Moro did the Cruiserweight Classic. He and Daniel Bryan were fantastic. We had Michael Cole and Nigel McGuinness. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, we need... we need. He suggests Trish Stratus. This is my suggestion. Have no idea if she's got chops or not. Sarah Del Rey. Oh, yeah. She seems so obvious for that role of of sort of bringing the women's uh, wrestling perspective to it. Um, as far as who to put next to her. Um, you can't go wrong with JR. Yeah, you really can't you go can't wrong, go wrong yeah. with JR. Yeah, and he makes that suggestion too. Yeah. JR, I like that a lot. And then I think Michael Cole. I, I love Michael Cole. Like as, as sort of a... Um, a guy who keeps everything grounded and like yes. and, and together calls the action. Calls the action exactly. Especially, it seems like with the crew. Or sorry, the UK tournament. This is just a supposition on my part. He didn't have Vince in his ear the whole time. It could be Michael Cole was so good, was so good. He was so well researched. Yep. Both <laughs> he, him and and Nigel McGuinness were so good. They did a killer job for the UK tournament. Nigel kind of cracks me up because I lo- I love him. But him trying to be a heel on NXT makes me laugh so much. Well, he, he can't decide if he wants to be a heel or not. That's kind of the problem. I know. I know. Because he kind of speaks highly of the heels, but sometimes not. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I just, I hope that he just finds his voice. Exactly. Like find the I guys think, that you want to get behind. I think once, once he finds his persona mm-hmm. at the announced desk, he's going to be fantastic. I, I like him a lot already. Yeah. I just, just because he's not polished or anything. I just I like his personality. Yeah. I think it works yeah. really yeah. well. And yeah, I think too. him and I think him and Percy are going to like a year from now are going to have such a really solid dynamic. Here's an idea for the uh, women's tournament. What about Beth Phoenix? 
Her Hall of Fame speech was outstanding. Oh, it was fantastic. It was outstanding. Oh, that's a good one. I like that. That's good, Beth Phoenix. Because that's kind of like, you know you're going to get something good. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Good job. Um, That's it. That's it for the Monday show. We're now on Mondays. Yeah, this is still a work in progress, obviously. We're yeah, still... let us know what you guys like, what you don't like. Yeah, working on the format. Um, but, you know, we'll we'll listen to feedback. If you guys think it's crap, if you just want us to do news and then read questions, I guess let us know. Yeah. If it's overwhelming, we'll probably change. We don't really care. Yeah, we're trying to find something that works for us and all of you for exactly. Monday. Exactly, that's right. It's Monday. Anyways, enjoy the rest of your day. We got Raw coming. What's going on in Raw tonight? Superstar Shakeup. Come on. <laughs> Lesnar's not going to be there. No. He's not advertised. Jericho. Uh, I don't know if he's still uh, out with injury. Yeah, I don't know. I think he might be coming back. Um, yeah, so anyways, Superstar, check out tonight. Until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs>